Okay, let's go ahead and solve this radical equation. And uh, solving radical equations is a big deal in algebra. You certainly need to know how to work with uh, square roots and radicals. But in this particular problem, we're going to not only focus on solving uh, this radical equation, but we're going to really focus in on extraneous roots because there's a lot of students that are confused, and rightfully so. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't think a majority of math books okay, do a good job being very, very clear about extraneous roots and how to check for extraneous uh, solutions in radical equations. I mean, they're... It's kind of somewhere buried in a book, but there, when you're studying algebra, uh, you can, you'll see here in a second how students can get confused with this. But uh, what my goal for this is to give you a clear takeaway when you're dealing with radical equations, how to check properly for extraneous solutions. So if you've been confused about extraneous solutions or you still got questions about it, go ahead and put your... Uh, questions or whatever comments you want in the comments section, uh, you're certainly not alone, okay? And if you've been confused, don't feel bad about it because, again, you can kind of look at uh, the solutions to radical equations in a couple different ways. But we're going to get into all this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of uh, mathematics, I could help you excel in your math course. Now, uh, if you're taking any exam that has math on it, uh, what I'm talking about is things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or ALEX exam, um, CLEP exam, teacher certification, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have a fantastic homeschool math curriculum you all want to check out and program, by the way. Been working with homeschoolers for a long, long time. So you definitely want to check out my uh, program if you homeschool. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use mine. I'm going to leave uh, the links to my math notes in the description of this video. But I've been teaching math for decades, and believe me when I tell you, um, you need to take excellent math notes, okay? This is truly uh, where the magic happens in terms of you learning mathematics, okay? The better your notes are, the better you're going to understand uh, stuff. Now, uh, again, you know, I've been teaching math uh, for decades, and I have a library in my home office. I don't even know how many math books I have, but it's a lot, okay? I I'm kind of a strange person. I like to collect math books. I got old, old, old math books yeah, I got things back from like the 1960s in terms of algebra books. I just kind of love the way uh, math has been taught throughout the decade. So, you know, I use a lot of these books in terms of my research and education on top of what I've been doing. So I'm always looking for better ways to kind of explain things and teach things. But when it comes to radical equations, I don't think that I've really seen too many great explanations on uh, extraneous solutions, okay? They talk about uh, extraneous solutions, but things aren't crystal clear uh, for students. And I think um, uh, if I was to design a math book, I would, you know, try to make this extra clear for students. Now, let's get into a couple uh, quick things where I think students get confused about stuff, okay? And I want to make sure I haven't confused anybody with my past videos or my instruction. So let's kind of um, emphasize some things here. So when you're studying algebra, okay, we get into all kinds of different topics. Now let's take a look at this first thing right here. Let's take a look at this equation. So this is x squared equals 16. This is a quadratic equation. And when you start studying quadratic equations, because uh, this is a polynomial degree two, you learn that all quadratic equations have two solutions, okay, both real and or imaginary numbers. So to solve this equation, x squared is equal to 16, we would go ahead and take the square root. I don't know if I misspoke there, but if I did, forgive me. Uh, I would take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is going to be x, and the square root of 16 is going to be both positive and negative 4. Right? These are our two solutions. Now, why is that? Because 4 times a positive 4 is a positive 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16. So this would satisfy this quadratic equation. Okay, when uh, The typical notation is x is equal to positive and negative uh, 4. So what ends up happening is that 
A lot of students think that if I'm going to take the square root of a real number, like 16 or 9 or whatnot, that we always have to write the positive and negative uh, roots to that. Well, that's not really the case. And this is kind of buried in some uh, math books, algebra books. I've kind of seen sometimes it's explained well. And other times it's kind of a little technical for students. But let's just kind of break things down. Way back like in the third grade or fifth grade where maybe you've been introduced to square roots, you're really introduced to the principal square root. Okay, so here the principal square root, I have a, uh, an example of it, is the square root of 16 is equal to what? Four. Okay, so the this concept, the principal square root, is when we take the square root of a real number, a positive real number, we only want the positive version of it, okay? Not negative four, okay? That is not gonna be uh, defined as the square root. So when we're just doing basic square root operations, okay, not ones that are involved in a quadratic equation, or we're just, you know, looking at like the square root of 16, we're gonna basically um, uh, focus in only on that principal square root. Okay, so we're just going to take the positive version of that. Now, I think that, um, you know, I could, I've probably been guilty of getting students confused with this, but let's just make sure you understand that there's something out there called the principal square root. So when you take the square root of a positive real number, it's kind of assumed that it's going to be just that positive version. Okay, however, when you're talking about uh, quadratic equations, polynomial equations, you do have to also... Uh, be familiar with that there is positive and negative versions also with square roots. I know it's, um, you know, confusing. These really, we're talking about roots, nth roots, and I'm going to do some additional videos on this because this I can kind of extend into this further. All I want you to know basically is that when we're talking about the square root right here, that there's something called a principal square root, and that's just going to be the positive number. And this is going to come into play here uh, when we solve this um, a radical equation and check for extraneous solutions. Now, let's uh, take a look at a radical function. This is a square root function, square root of x. It's a radical. So if I was to look at a graph right here, okay, this is what the graph would look like. Now, the, this is a graph on terms of the of uh, on the real number plane and real number x and y because here, okay, the domain is going to be all x's that are greater than or equal to zero. That's the domain. Now, if you are familiar with functions, hopefully you understand that, that we can't take the square root of a negative number because we end up with a complex number. So we want to look at this as a function. Now, let's just kind of see if we took, like, let's say uh, 16. Let's just do a little uh, table here. Uh, just draw this a little bit better. Let's say uh, here's x and here's y. So let's look at this function. If I say, okay, when x is 16, what is y? Well, y is going to be, I'm going to plug in 16 for x, okay, right there. So it's going to be the square root of 16. Now, uh, if we take and we look at both positive and negative, okay, well, what's going on here? For every x, there's two y's. This is not a function. And the way this would look is this graphically here at 16. We would have 16, 4, positive 4 up there. And then we would have down here at 16, we'd also have negative 4. Okay, you can see uh, graphically here, this fails the vertical line test. This is not a function because we're both we're considering both the positive and negative of this square root. So when we're looking at things like a, uh, a radical function, uh, we have to consider the domain. Okay, when we're talking about the set of real numbers. So... We want to just keep, um, uh, we just want to keep that principal square root in mind. So in this case, uh, the coordinates here at 16 will just be a positive 4. Okay, so this is going to be our graph uh, because we have domain restrictions. So that kind of comes into play as bits. So if that kind of helps you understand uh, the principal square root and why we're not taking both the positive and negative versions of it when we're talking about radical equations, well, that can kind of help you. But here's the bottom line. When you're talking about solving radical equations, when we check our uh, for extraneous solutions, you're going to just be using that principal square root. Okay, You're only going to be taking the square root uh, and uh, using that positive version, not the positive and negative. Because you can see, if we use the negative version uh, here in a second, that uh, we could make things uh, work. So let me get into the problem here. All right, so when you're solving a radical equation, 
the first thing you need to do is you got to get rid of the square root. All right, so in this particular problem, I need to square both sides. So right here I have the square root. So I need to go ahead and square both sides I have, as I have indicated right here. And when I square root this radical, okay, on this left-hand side, I'm just going to be left, the square root uh, or the radical goes away, and I'm left with 2x minus 1. And then here, x minus 2 squared is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, so let's go down here further. And here we have a lovely quadratic uh, equation. So I'm going to set, bring all these terms over to the other side, and I'm left with 0 is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5. But I'll go ahead and put that uh, my quadratic equation on the left-hand side. We'll write it this way. It's just kind of typically we like to write all of our variables on the left-hand side and our numbers on the right-hand side. So at this point, to solve this quadratic equation, this quadratic or this trinomial, this quadratic trinomial to be more precise, is factorable. So I can factor x squared minus 6x plus 5 as x minus 1 uh, times x minus 5 and then set each one of these factors equal to 0. All right, hopefully uh, you're familiar with what I'm doing. If not, you'll need to go ahead and work on solving um, quadratic equations. So here we set each factor equal to zero because this is an example of the zero product property. So x is equal to one and x is equal to five. So here are our solutions. So these solutions are uh, excellent solutions. These are the solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, no doubt about it. Uh, this is a quadratic equation. It's going to have two solutions, and here they are, okay? However, we're trying to solve this radical equation, okay? Right up here, this is what we're trying to, uh, whoops, uh, we're trying to solve, yes, right here. Let me get the original problem. Okay, we're trying to solve this, okay? So the first step you do is you square both sides, and then you uh, solve the remaining equation, Okay, so down here is step two. Okay, so that's what we've done. But these uh, solutions are only absolutely the solutions, 100% guaranteed, uh, the solutions for this quadratic equation. But they may or may not be the solutions to the original equation that I'm trying to solve, this one right here. Because when you square both sides, here's the main idea that you need to kind of uh, remember in algebra. When you square both sides and there's variables involved, the fact that you uh, are taking some power to both sides of the equation can introduce extraneous roots, okay? This can. So that means that when we do solve down here, well, we don't know if these are uh, these roots are actually the, the uh, roots to the original equation. There could be some extraneous ones, some extra ones that we have to throw out, okay? So one of these can work, both of these can work, or none of these can work. We just don't know. So that's why you must check um, these solutions into your original equation. This is not an optional thing. It's like, oh, here, you know, here's my solutions. I'm too uh, lazy. I don't want to finish the problem because you can't, people, a lot of students think that's kind of optional. No, we just don't know which which one of these works. If that both could, and one could or none could, okay? And it could be any kind of that situation. So we have to now plug this in, and this is where the confusion is gonna come into play, okay, about extraneous roots. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. All right, so um, remember from our quadratic equation, we ended up with x is equal to one and x is equal to five. So we need to uh, check these into the original equation, okay? In other words, I'm gonna plug in for x one, and then I'm gonna, uh, uh, right here, okay? And then I'm gonna plug in for this x5, and then we're going to see where things take us. All right, so let's go over here and let's focus our attention Oops, on the left-hand side. All right, so here we're going to check uh, the original equation for x is equal to 1. So I'm going to plug in 1 for where x is at. Okay, you can see where I'm plugging in. You can kind of just follow this work right there. So 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1. So that's going to be the square root of 2 minus 1, or 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's going to be the square root of 1. Now, on the right-hand side, I got 1 minus 2, and that's, of course, going to be negative 1. So at this point, is 1 a solution? Now, this is what this whole video is about, okay? We have to ask ourselves, is this true or false? Well, at this point, okay, we have to take the square root of 1. The, we have to take the square root of a positive 1. Now, 
a lot of students where we're talking about x squared is equal to 1, if I was to solve this uh, quadratic equation, again, you would end up with x is equal to positive negative 1, which would be correct. However, when we're dealing with radical equations, we're only going to be dealing with that principal square root. So you only take the positive version of this. So the square root of 1 is a positive 1, and that is not equal to a negative 1. Therefore, uh, 1, x is equal to 1, is an extraneous solution. We throw that out. Okay, so again, that was this is the whole point of me doing this video. But now let's go ahead and check x is equal to 5 and see what we come up with. All right, so I'm going to plug in 5 right here where x is at. Okay, so I have 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 minus 1, that's going to be the square root of 9. I'll check that in a second. 5 minus 2 is 3, so I have 3. So at this point, i got to determine, is this true or false? Well, again, I'm talking about the principal square root. So the square root of 9, in terms of how I'm going to look at it, the principal square root, I'm only thinking about the positive uh, version of that. So that is 3, and 3 is equal to 3, and there you go. Okay, that is correct. So x is equal to 5 is the solution and the only solution to our uh, radical equation. All right, if you understood this, okay, if you're like 100%, like I knew all that, yeah, I knew this, then I must go ahead and give you a happy face with a good old 1985 Mohawk and an A plus and a 1000% because most students get confused about that. All those, a lot of students, they'll just take the square root. Um, you know, when you're solving quadratic equations, I've seen the opposite problem come into hand. So if I just kind of randomly gave a student an equation like that, I would see these, this right here as a solution, x is equal to four. So they're like, oh, I can do it like this. So x is equal to four. And then, hey, you're only giving me 50% of the answer. So we have to be careful about the principle, you know, uh, this idea of the principle square root, or when we see square roots, okay, and radicals, you know, what, in what context are we are talking about? And this is, there's more of a technical uh, explanation to this about the definition of square roots and the definition of roots and, and solutions and rational uh, exponents, etc. And I'm going to uh, make some follow-up uh, videos on this just so we can avoid uh, the confusion. But just here's the, here's the bottom line. When you're talking about radical equations, okay, and where, because these are quite common in algebra, you certainly have to know how to do them, and you're checking for a uh, check in your uh, solutions for extraneous solutions just go ahead and take that positive square root okay that principal square root when you're trying to determine whether that solution creates a true or false statement okay so hopefully this video um, has cleared up any confusion if that is the case if it helps you out in any way go ahead and consider smashing that like button that definitely helps me out uh, tremendously. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, over 10 years, have over a thousand videos, basic to advanced math. I try to, you know, spread it around, you know, from arithmetic, all, all math is awesome. So even arithmetic fractions, I love algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, calculus, all math is good. Okay. So if you need uh, help with mathematics and any, any of these uh, levels that I described, I have a ton of content on my channel, so you know my goal is always to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Uh, but my best math help will always be within our math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.